I have an audio buddy who I call Mr. Vintage. I call him that because he plays mostly with affordable vintage gear these days. Now, he has owned many system the price of a house in the past. I remember early in my audio journey, one day, Mr. Vintage dropped by and he was explaining to me what does an airy soundstage means. Now, if you look at my Gershman Avant-Garde video on how I describe that 3D holographic soundstage, it was actually Mr. Vintage who gave me that inspiration. Now, I remember my wife was in the room that day and she told me later, Hey man, Thomas, what the hell is wrong with you guys? Listening to air, the space in between instruments. Come on! What happened to just listening to music? See, my wife is all about the music. She listens to music when she works with her cell phone speaker. That is why whenever I get a comment telling me, Thomas, hey, you're too obsessed with gear. You should just enjoy the music. I always reply with, yeah, you remind me of my wife. Just listen to the music on your cell phone speakers if it is all about the music. Now, obviously, the fact that you're watching my videos is because you have experienced what a proper sound system can do, right? Instead of a cell phone speaker. Having said that, as I meet different audio files on my journey, I realize what people get out of their system is different. What they listen for in their system is different. So this video is really more for beginners. And once again, it is just me sharing my journey with you. Nothing I say in this video is like the absolute truth. It is just what I've noticed. So for today's video, I'd like to explore two topics. First, what do audiophiles, you know, a group of people with heightening listening senses, listen for in a stereo system? Second, I want to explore is what does it mean? Like it is so musical or engaging. What does it mean to me? So first topic, what do audiophiles listen for in their system? Yes, let's admit it. Audiophiles have this superpower that they can hear things that normal people cannot. Well, actually, I should correct myself. What I should say is audiophiles will notice many more things that I'll refer as elements in this video. Okay, I'll call them elements that compared to a normal person. For example, these elements are soundstage, width and depth, transparency, speed, imaging, dynamics, and so forth. Watch any YouTube videos, audio review videos, and it's the same. We talk about treble response, how's the mid-range and bass, you know, what else? I think that is what most people discuss when talking about a stereo system. Now, let me list out a few things that most people discuss here on screen. I have to say it is interesting. The fact that we are able to recognize these things in a stereo system has brought us all together. Amazing if you think about it. Now, beyond talking about soundstage, dynamics, and so forth, I noticed how I talk about audio with some of my Asian audio buddies is a bit different. I noticed the approach to discussing audio is a bit different when compared to the Western audiophiles YouTube videos, for example. I remember a few years ago, Mr. Vintage and Mr. Cantor, both Asian, went with me to the Montreal Audio Show. And we were in this room listening to this expensive Macintosh system. Mr. Vintage asked me a question that I will forever remember. No, he did not ask me if I find the system dynamic nor what I think about the sound stage. He asked, can you see the shape of the mouth of the singer? Or maybe the movement of the lips of the singer probably is a better translation. I was like, excuse me, I'm not watching a movie, you know. You know, you know what's interesting? If you can understand Chinese and watch audiophile YouTube videos in Chinese, talking about the shape of the mouth of the singer is not uncommon. The logic behind that is if your system is good enough, it should image so well that you can picture the singer in front of you. And because it is so realistic, you can imagine her lips moving. That is why I say, that's why I, I would say things like in the past, in my past video, the image is so strong that when I close up my eyes, I feel like I can you know, stretch out and grab her neck. Now, other things we talk about, the body shape of the female singer. For example, is it slim, neutral, or full? The other day, I was listening to Mr. Quad's system. 
He's another audio buddy of mine that owns a pair of Quad 2905. Now, with his Macintosh 6700, I noticed the sound stage was just enormous. Beautiful, full sounding with rich bass. Then we switched to the Worthington R800i. Superb Class A power that had no problem driving the Quad 2905. I hear the classy, linear, characteristic instrument seems more distinct and, you know, blah, 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 blah. The biggest thing I noticed is the body shape of the female singer has changed from full to lean. You notice I never mentioned stuff like that in my review. Well, I guess people will think of me as a pervert if I start describing like the shape of the singer. Interestingly, Mr. Vintage has taught me all this stuff when I first started my audio journey. And if you look at like Chinese magazines, audio magazines, it is not uncommon to touch on that. Another thing me and my audio buddies would discuss is like the maturity of the male vocal. Like, does he sound young or mature? The thickness of the string of the violin, the orchestra scale, how's the sweetness of the mid-range and so forth. Just recently, Mr. Vintage asked me if I can picture the back of the head of the singer when I was testing this high-end system. Because for him, his vintage system cannot do that. And he knows it's possible to have that illusion since he used to own system the price of a house. You know what? I avoid talking about all this when I review gear because I remember in one of my early videos, I talk about the age of the singer and I got roasted. The logic was, if you know when the singer recorded the song and her age, and you keep using it as a reference, you would, test, you would use this to test if the system is neutral or not. If the singer sounds just right for her age, well, obviously you know when she recorded it and ideally have heard it in a concert at that age, you can conclude that the system is somewhat neutral if it's matching its age. Now, it is a different approach to evaluating a system Anyway, man, ever since I got roasted, I stay with the normal stuff and talk about soundstage, dynamics, treble, bass, speed, and so forth. I brought all this up today because uh, I saw these words and concepts used in the Chinese audio file YouTube video just recently. And I was asking myself, why can't I discuss more in depth going beyond just talking about the usual stuff with my audience? Why can't it be a bit abstract? And I guess that's the problem I see. All this is abstract and you can't really measure it. The body shape of the singer, how do you measure that? No, it is not 36, 24, 34, okay? Now, the second topic I want to discuss is why some gear really draws me in regardless of price. Some gear just are so musical that it glues me to my chair. Now, for today, when I call something musical, okay, I don't mean it in the sense that it is opposite of analytical. Like, you know, musical, slightly wrote off, not detailed. As a result, you in, end up enjoying the music instead of analyzing the music. I don't mean it like that, okay? But rather in the sense that it is so engaging that you want to keep listening. Originally, I, was, I wanted to use the word like great musicality, but I don't think that's proper English. So what makes an audio gear really engaging? Is it the price? Is it the treble? Is it the mid-range? Is it the whatever? Remember Mr. Quad? He has helped me evaluate some of my DACs and he created this Excel table comparing using all the standard criteria such as soundstage, dynamics, speeds, imaging, and so forth. Here, I put it on the screen. You know the usual stuff. So logically, if something scores the highest, it should sound the best, right? Yet, the DAC that Mr. Quad loves the most, I think scored the lowest. How is that possible? Remember my last video on the affordable deckware amp? The owner of the amp, Mark, has tried a lot more expensive amps, and yet he chose the deckware as the best for him. If we talk about, like for example, dynamics and airy soundstage, the Wilsington R8 tube, deck, uh, tube amp is better. If we talk about detail and speed, the Onyx tube monoblock I lent him is better. Yet he chose the deckware amp, and what I realized is, the sum of all parts is more important than the individual elements. The nice balance, balance is what makes an audio gear engaging. Now, what I'm looking for is the right balance for these elements for my taste. Remember that story I told you in the Mike Nerdak video? I had a friend who had this very nice system. 
And every once in a while, he would upgrade with every upgrade, something becomes better, more base, more detail, more dynamics. And yet I realized at one point, I find myself lacking a system a few upgrades before. The balance is gone and it is no longer to my taste. Now I'd like to end the video with a little rant since we're talking about what to listen for in an audio system. Now don't forget, if you're gonna subscribe, you must hit the notification bells else you will be wasting your energy. Finally, oh, by the way, I have a Patreon account now. Now, I sometimes see uh, people criticizing older audio file, especially reviewers. Like me, if you compare it to my younger nephew, I can't hear beyond 12K. I actually did a test with my nephew. We would play a test tone from high frequency to low, and he would pick up sound from the speaker a few seconds before me. Now, my problem with people criticizing older people is they assume that to be able to listen to high frequency is important. Let me remind you again, and I'll put on screen the things we listen for in a stereo system. Do you think an ex inexperienced young person will be able to point out all these things I have here on screen over an experienced audiophile? Remember, evaluating gear is looking more than just listening for high frequency. There's all this stuff I have here on screen and more, right? You need to consider how many of these elements require me to be able to hear high, higher frequency. My non audiophile nephew who have better hearing than me, everything he described, I can hear. The difference is when I describe back to him what I hear, he did not notice everything I noticed. A while ago, uh, Mr. Multi system dropped by. I call him that because he owns a lot of systems. I mean, you think I have a lot of gear? He has maybe three or four times more than me. So we were talking about hearing loss and I asked him, so given you cannot hear as much into the high frequency as me, why is it that you can tell the focal we're testing today is more detailed and brighter than this vintage kef? So the fact that you can hear only up to eight kilohertz, for example, is not important because we hear the same characteristic in both speakers. If the fact you can only hear up to eight kilohertz is important and both these speakers can go beyond 20 kilohertz, then in terms of brightness, it should be the same, but it is not. Also high frequency is just like, you know, 3% of the overall picture when evaluating audio equipment. That's why it drives me nuts when people say, oh, that reviewer is not reliable because he's old. Mr. Vintage, who is a bit older than me, can hear less high frequency than most young audio file, but he can describe the characteristic of an audio equipment way better than most. I'm sure some people might be, well, if you can't hear high frequency, you can't hear certain things. Well, if I put up this graph of the most common musical instruments, the fact I cannot hear beyond 12 kilohertz, does it matter? Is there one instrument here I cannot hear? So my audio buddies, never let someone say you are not worthy to talk about audio just because you are older. Most of the audio files I meet, young or old, have so much to offer. I'm always in awe when I speak to passionate audio files. So I guess that's about it. That's my rant for today. With that, I'll see you next time.